Hello viewers, we have been talking about the real time quantitative PCR technique and in this video of ours, we are going to take up another method, another technique of this RT-PCR that is based on the hydrolysis of the probe and that technique is molecular bacon assay or yeah, molecular bacon technique. Basically, molecular bacon term is used because of the probe that is used, because of the structure and the functioning of the probe used for the purpose. Bacon refers to the guiding light, specially present on top of the hill or a tower. So, its structure is like a hairpin loop and it fluorescence and it leads us to the uh, sequence of interest because it is very specific as we know as we have seen with the linear probe that is the Tackman technique that these uh, methods or these uh, essays based on the hydrolysis of the probe they are very sequence specific. So, molecular bacons, they are hairpin loop like structures of oligonucleotides and they have complementary sequences on both the ends. This central loop, it is complementary to the target sequences and these target sequences, target means they are complementary to some stretch present in the DNA that is being replicated or that is undergoing the polymerase chain reaction. And this central sequence which forms the loop, it is flanked on both the sides by 5 to 6 base pairs, inverted repeats, so that they may form complementary base pair with each other and this forms the stem and this forms the loop like structure of this molecular bacon probes. Now on the 3 prime uh, end of this probe is present the quincher molecule and on the 5 prime end covalently linked to it is the fluorescent molecule and we have seen in our previous video on Tackman technique that these two molecules because of fluorescence, resonance, energy transfer, until and unless this quincher is in close proximity with the fluorescent molecule, we won't be able to detect the fluorescence of this molecule. So, the stem part, it keeps these two molecules together in close proximity to each other and the fluorescence of the fluoropo it is quenched by FRET and we are unable to detect it in the system until and unless this stem like structure it opens up. So, when it forms complementary base pairs, the loop part, when the sequences of this loop part they form uh, complementary base pairs of hydrogen bonds with the sequence of the target DNA at that point of time these hydrogen bonds between these inverted repeats they open up and the distance between these two molecules that is the fluorescent molecule and the quencher molecule or the reporter molecule or quencher molecule the terms they are different it is the same thing so the distance between them it increases because of the opening up of this loop and we are able to detect this uh, fluorescence of the reporter molecule because now it is unquenched. So, these probes, the molecular bacons, they are very specific and they are specific and sensitive to the limit that even if one of the base 
is not similar they are then they will continue to exist in their stem loop structure so we will be able to detect the mutation of even a single nucleotide with the help of this technique of polymerase chain reaction and if this uh, sequence it finds its complementary sequence then it opens up and we are able to detect the number of amplicons present in the system by measuring the intensity of the fluorescence radiated by the system so the polymerization reaction it is performed in three different steps and the tac that is the polymerization reaction it is carried over it is catalyzed by our uh, tac enzyme itself so the structure of this stem is very important and designing of this uh, this uh, molecular bacon it is the crucial step so skill is required this is one of the drawbacks you may say or skill requiring step of this particular assay or technique of uh, real time quantitative pcr so if we just see how it works we know that in a polymerase chain reaction the dna uh, target dna that is to be amplified we subject it to high temperatures and at high temperature it denatures forming single stranded templates and then after when the temperature is lowered at that point of time both the forward and the reverse primers they connect or join to these template molecules template strands now in this molecular bacon qpcr along with these primers even the probe it attaches it anneals to the segment of the dna molecule that is complementary to it once it forms this hydrogen bonds of once it anneals it will open up and now we will be able to detect the fluorescence so more are the number of templates which are undergoing uh, polymerization more will be the fluorescence of the system now as this extension phase it proceeds the temperature it is raised up and it's a characteristic feature of this molecular bacon that as the temperature is raised up it uh, separates it uh, denatures from this template dna molecule and it again forms its uh, stem loop structure reducing the fluorescence over here and the uh, tac enzyme thermosequaticus obtained tac polymerase it continues with the polymerization reaction that is it forms the double stranded dna molecule so in this manner we are able to detect the number of uh, single stranded templates that are undergoing replication but this probe it does not interfere with the polymerization step by itself so this method is used to detect the number of amplicons the quantity of the amplicons along with if some changes matlab um, with the help of this particular technique we will be able to detect even a uh, single nucleotide mutations so this technique it is of immense utility and it is uh, a technique that is again based on the 
hydrolysis of the probe. So in the next video of ours, we are going to do with the third type of uh, technique that is based on the hydrolysis of probe. First, it was the linear probes. In this, it is the molecular bacon that attaches in between the two primers. And next time, the next advanced technique, the scorpion assay, it's a step forward to mitigate the disadvantages or to reduce the disadvantages of this step too.